This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The Lighting Source, major line distributor of commercial and industrial lighting, including hard-to-find bulbs and fixtures, as well as a broad range of LED products. With 35 years' experience servicing lighting needs, The Lighting Source proudly sponsors Sports Files. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Today on Sports Files, we'll preview the upcoming Grizzlies season and do so with three knowledgeable and entertaining members of the Memphis media. The 2013-14 Grizzlies season was filled with a little bit of everything, and I do mean everything. The season began with new head coach Dave Yeager taking the reins of the team from Lionel Hollins. By the end of the season, the man who was instrumental in facilitating the move to elevate Yeager, general manager and team president Jason Levian, was out of a job. In between, the Grizzlies battled through injuries to key players such as Marcus Gasol, Tony Allen, and Quincy Poddexter to stay firmly planted in the Western Conference race. They added Courtney Lee and Benno Udra and advanced to the postseason for a fourth straight year. In the end, the Grizzlies earned the seventh seed and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with second seed Oklahoma City. But a seventh game suspension to Zach Randolph left the Grizzlies shorthanded for the do-or-die final game. And it was the Thunder who would advance. Fast forward to this season, and the expectations are quite high for the Grizzlies. Barring any unforeseen injury, the Grizzlies are the deepest they've ever been. The core unit is once again intact. And the addition of Vince Carter can only bolster the team through his experience and ability to knock down the outside shot. Rookies Jordan Adams and Jarnell Stokes will wait their turns, but both have terrific upside. Today we'll examine the prospects for the team this new season and brush over it with a fine-tooth comb. Joining me to add their perspective and insight, Grizzlies beat writer from the Commercial Appeal, Ron Tillery. The master of the pick and pop, also from the CA, Chris Harrington. And Grizzlies television sideline reporter and co-host of the Fish and Stat Show on Sports 56, and FM 87.7, Rob Fisher. It's next on Sports Files. Well, guys, thanks again for joining me. Looking forward to hearing your insight on the upcoming season. Dave Yeager announced earlier in the week that Tony Allen will start at the two. Of course, he got hurt last year and ended up coming off the bench. And Courtney Lee, who basically replaced Tony, is going to start at the three. Fish, what do you think about that? And then let's talk also about the rotation because they're so deep with the twos and threes. Well, I, I think it's good if Courtney can get into a rhythm like, like he did when he first came to the Grizzlies last season. Um, I, I like Tony starting. I mean, I think it, uh, it will certainly energize him as if he needs any more energizing, uh, at least to start the season. I mean, it, I don't know about rotation because you have a lot of different things. I think it's good Quincy Pondexter can come in. He can play the two or the three depending on uh, matchups. You know, Tayshawn Prince available if you want to, you know, bring in an IQ guy and, and right. defensive guy or if you're going with a smaller lineup. Uh, I, Vince Carter obviously is going to come in and shoot. So I, I think you have a lot of options, and I, and I think it will depend on how the flow of the game is going night in and night out. Ron, do you think there's a, an odd man out now because they're so deep at the 2-3? Tayshawn started last year. In the end of the game, he, he was not there. Now he's going to come off the bench. How, how are they going to use him, and what do you think about the Lee-Allen combo? Well, it's small. I think that's the obvious um, uh, concern. You, you're talking about uh, Allen playing much taller threes. But again, we saw in the playoffs against Oklahoma City how much he can shut down longer players. Uh, so, but I, I think there's a lot of emphasis and maybe too much put on who starts. Right. It's all about who finishes. I know that's cliche. But I think for the, from a coaching standpoint, you can manipulate the game however you want uh, from that starting position. So, I mean, you, you, you can see Vince Carter at the two or the three. Quincy Pondexter can swing both ways. So I just think it gives Dave Yeager a lot of options. And given the fact that we do know Tony plays much better as a starter, and he's earned the right to start. He's been a big part of, of this whole grit and grind era. And, 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 and he's infectious with his energy, uh, and you need that to start games. Uh, I, I think if you're talking to odd man out, it's obviously uh, Tayshaun Prince. Uh, and, and Dave has said 
that he'll be in a Mike Miller type role where he may play some nights, he may not play some nights. And again, I think that's the versatility that the coaching staff has because Tayshawn Prince still has a little game in him, probably a little bit more than people give him credit for. I noticed some starting is not that important, but I've interviewed Courtney Lee a number of times, mm -hmm. and he said he'd rather start. So he is starting. I don't know if that played into Dave Yeager's decision. What do you think, Chris? I, I think it may have. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I think it got down to the point where really the only three options, that was Tony Allen, Courtney Lee, and Quincy Pondexter because Vince Carter is not – I don't think they want Carter to start anyway, but I don't think he's healthy enough to play starters minutes right mm -hmm. out of the gate because of his offseason ankle surgery. And I think Tayshaun Prince at this stage of his career is a situational player. I think – and I think there are situations where he's going to be very helpful. They don't really have a long three to guard bigger threes. Other than um, Tayshaun, Pondexter's the biggest three, and he's 6'6". Six, six. And there are so many more stretch fours in the NBA now, you know, power forwards to go out and shoot – on the perimeter, and Prince is probably the best defensive matchup they have for those players. So I think Prince will get his 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 playing time in situational situation, you know, based on defense, right. so it's sort of spot minutes. But I think coming out of the gate, I think Tony Allen, Courtney Lee, and Quincy Pondex are probably going to play the bulk of the minutes on the wing. Okay, Ron, let me start with you. I want to talk about Coach Dave Yeager. Fill in the blank for me. What will make Dave Yeager a better coach in his second season at the helm? His ability to communicate. I think that's where he fell short last year uh, from the very start. Um, I mean, he, he had the well-known incident with Quincy Pondexter. I think there was a little right. thing with Tony Allen toward the end. I, I think he's found out that even if a guy doesn't like what you're saying, it's best to be direct and, and uh, uh, from the onset. I think that's how he started this camp. We've been talking about how players have been serious and businesslike. Dave Yeager has been very serious and businesslike. And, and so I think his ability to communicate in the big chair is, is where he'll, he'll excel. Chris, how do you answer that question? Um, I agree with Ron. I, I think there may have been players who sort of got tired of Lionel Hollins in a way, but I think they all respected him. And he was blunt and he was honest. He was willing to, to address, you know, from the star players to the scrubs, he was willing to, to address players directly. And I think there was a lot of respect that came out of that. And I think Yeager has to grow into that. And I think hopefully after a first year on the job, he's sort of gotten into that frame a little bit better. Well, I think it grew into it as the season went along right. last year. And I think that experience is, is what's going to be a big factor for Dave this season. I, I talked to assistant coach Dwayne Tickner last week, who's Dave's mentor and has been around him a long time throughout Dave's coaching career. And, and he said the same thing. He said, you know, Dave talked last preseason about his voice being heard as the head coach. And he said, you know, a lot of things happen, and he's put into the seat, and he hadn't been a head coach in a while. He had experience as a head coach, but it had been a while. And he said, really, he didn't think Dave got comfortable and, and things got going until December, maybe into right. January, and that's when the team really played better. I, I think this offseason, this preseason, and throughout this coming season, you're going to see a different Dave Yeager because of the experiences he went through last year, and I think his voice is being heard now as a head coach. It's a big-time adjustment because you don't really understand it until you actually become the head coach. When you're the assistant coach, you're everybody's Different buddy. Different game, isn't it? Everybody's buddy. And so you cannot go into head coaching that way. You're going to have to set some boundaries, be straight, make some enemies. But everybody's got to understand this is not personal. This is what's best for the team. And he has enough assistants to back him up in case he needs them. <laughs> because to add it to that because that's their role. Their exactly. role is to go, oh, don't worry about it. You know, <laughs> good, it'll cop, be bad cop. Right, good cop, bad cop. Chris, it's been a heck of a preseason for Marcus Saul. We all know he's in a contract year. Yep. Do you expect that to be a distraction by any means? I think it's going to be a constant conversation topic all season long. Um, whether that's a distraction is partly up to him, but you're going to hear about it all year because he's eligible to sign an extension in December, and that's not going to happen. It's going to wait until next summer for financial reasons. And so because it's a small market, because he's a sought-after player, and because it'll be a mystery until next summer, you're going to read stories all, the, all year long about, you know, Marcus Hall is going to the Knicks, Marcus Hall is going to the Lakers. Writers around the country are going to put him on other teams, whether that ends up happening in the long term or not. So it's, going to, it's an inevitable conversation all year. Fish, there have been other teams in that situation with a star player that was in his contract year, and it was a distraction. Not always, but there have been examples where there has been. Do you think it'll be okay? I think it'll be a distraction, like Chris said, in the manner of it'll continue to be brought up. I mean, every city... By us, the, the, the media. <laughs> yeah, and, and the opposing media, every right. time the Grizzlies are on the road, it'll be brought up. I think the local media will understand quickly. Dave Yeager has already made it clear. He's not talking about it. Uh, I think Mark will make it clear throughout the season. He's not talking about it. So I don't think it'll be a distraction for the team. It'll be more of a... 
annoyance uh, probably okay. for Mark and for Dave, but I, I don't think as far as the team's concerned, it, it will be a, a distraction. But, yeah, we're going to read about it a lot. Ron, let me switch gears. A question I ask you guys every time you come by to do this preview, do they have enough shooting? <laughs> I think that's always the question with the way this team is constructed because they rely so much on their big guys. Right. And so, yeah, we're going to find out if Quincy Bondexter can be a much more consistent shooter, if Mike Conley can improve his three-point shooting, if, if Courtney Lee can be aggressive like they need him to be. Um, I'm leaving somebody out. Oh, if Vince, Vince Carter has enough left in the tank. I mean, he, he came out and looked pretty good in the game against Atlanta in the preseason, and then he went to Oklahoma City and went one for seven. Right. So at 37 years old, there's not a gradual drop-off. He's going to wake up one day, and he's not going to be able to play. So that's still going to be a question. We just don't know. Along those lines with shooting, mm -hmm. yeah. John mm -hmm. Luer is being talked about as a guy that will be used as a stretch four. He can shoot the outside shot. Is, mm -hmm. is that something they really can depend on? As long as you're playing Tony Allen 25 minutes a night on the wing, you're not going to be a good three-point shooting team unless you get three-point shooting somewhere in your front court. And the only player who's going to provide that is going to be John Lohr. And so they need John Lohr to, to be a rotation player every night, not a part-timer like last year, and not to be a three-point specialist because he's got a more well-rounded game than that, but to be a consistent threat to hit threes every mm -hmm. night. If they don't get you know, 100 threes from him over the course of a season, they're not going to move the needle very much, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Fish, Zebo calls this the most talented team since he arrived in Memphis. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I think so, because I, I thought about that about the team last year, and I think this year they're deeper. Um, so they've, they've added, you know, the question of do they have enough shooting? Well, they have more, uh, I think, you know, especially if, you know, what Ron was talking about, can Quincy become a guy that you can right. depend on to shoot? Can Courtney Lee be aggressive? And then and, Carter as well. And Vince Carter. You know, the difference between Vince Carter and Mike Miller, Mike Miller would have a lot of games where he'd shoot one time or none or two, you know, maximum. Vince Carter's going to get his shots. So I think they, they have the ability to be a better shooting team. I think they have more depth than they've had in the past. They're solid, really, at every position. I, I, I don't think you look at the roster right now and say, boy, they got a real weakness at a certain position. Maybe shooting from the wing, but you hope you get that off the bench. All right, quick answers. The key starter and the key reserve for this team to have a special year. Let me start with you, Ron. Marcus Hall, I, you know, they've asked him to score, and, and he's got to be more than just an elbow shooter. And I think he's slimmed down, and he's made himself – uh, into the shape of a guy who can be a lot more versatile and agile, getting on the block, running the floor, getting, you know, run outs, uh, Marcus Hall. And then uh, as a reserve, I, I love John Luer. I, I think he is absolutely an X factor uh, because, uh, as Chris said, his game is so, so much more well-rounded than just being a stretch four shooting threes. Chris? I agree with Marcus Hall completely. I think mm -hmm. this needs to be a career season for Marcus Hall. Which will really benefit him. He needs to get back to defensive player of the year level mm -hmm. basketball and then also become even better than he's been before on the offensive end. Mm -hmm. And on the bench, I agree with, with Ron that John Lure is the biggest X factor. But I also think now that we're starting to have some doubts about Vince Carter's ankle, Vince Carter, like how if he, can he be what he was for Dallas last year? Okay, Fish. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and change it up because yeah. I, I agree with it, both, <laughs> both of the guys. But I, I think starting – Mike Conley's improved every year that, that he's been with the Grizzlies. And each year you wonder how can he improve again. I think he does by just continuing to be a better leader, continuing to run the offense uh, better than he has, continuing to improve his shot. So I'll go with Mike reluctantly because I think Mark's the, the best answer. But I'll go with Mike off the bench. Also agree, but I'll go a different route. Quincy Pondexter, I think the yep. better Quincy is, the better this team's going to be. All right, before I ask you for predictions for the Grizzlies, in the West, we know it's loaded once again. Who's going to come out on top, and is there going to be a surprise team that gets into the postseason that uh, may not have been in the postseason the last couple of years? A team like, you know, New Orleans, how good can they be? Chris? I think it's going to be the same eight teams as last year. Because I don't, I don't believe in New Orleans depth yet. And I think a lot of their best players are pretty brittle. So I think they're probably a year away. I just think those eight teams are so strong that I think it's going to be hard for anybody to crack Ron? last year's eight. Well, I, I tell you what, if New Orleans can stay healthy, uh, they've got one of the best five players in the league in, in Anthony Davis. And, and they are a very talented team, very well coached. Uh, they, they preach defense. They could absolutely be a team that gets in there. They, they could be where Phoenix was last year. If they, if they make it, they, they may, if they, if they don't make it, I should say, they'll be right there. Well, Phoenix, I would figure, would be right there as well. But, mm -hmm. Fish, what do you think? I don't know about Phoenix. They're so guard-oriented. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure guards. about them. Right. I, 
That if with New Orleans, though, is capitalized, yeah. the bold letters, if. I mean, they have been so brittle. I, I don't expect them. I think it'll be the same eight teams. Mm -hmm. What's going to be interesting to me at the top is Oklahoma City. How far do you fall 20 games without Kevin Durant? Two or three games could mean a seed or two in the Western Conference. All right, give me about 30 seconds each. The Grizzlies, what can we expect to see this season? Ron, I'll start with you. I don't know if I'll have 30 seconds. Uh, it's going to be short. I, I, they're a 51 team, obviously. And I, I, I expect them – I don't think they moved the needle so much this offseason okay. to put them in the upper echelon uh, where San Antonio, Oklahoma City, the Clippers are. Uh, but I do think they're in the five to seven range, and, uh, and they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs just because they play a way that nobody else plays, and they play it better than anybody in terms of that ground and pound game. Okay, Chris? I'm going to bump them up just slightly from Ron. I'm going to say the four to six range. Mm -hmm. I think they're competing with Golden State and Dallas to try to get that fourth seed. I don't think they can – even with Durant's injury, I don't think they catch the Thunder, the Clippers, or the Spurs. Mm -hmm. So on the bubble to get that home court in the first round of the playoffs. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I, I think so, yeah. Right. I, I agree I agree as well. I, I think four to six uh, for the Grizzlies this year. If, if, again, they stay healthy, which obviously we don't know, and that was a big factor last year, I think the four to six range, and I agree with Ron, and, and I've said it for a few years now, they get to the playoffs, it, it doesn't matter where they're at. I think they're a tough matchup for virtually anybody. Nobody's a great matchup for the Spurs, but uh, virtually anybody else because of the style that they play. They play smart basketball, good defense, and you have other teams that, you know, they just run, gun, chuck it all over the place and, and don't play smart basketball for 48 minutes. And I think the Grizzlies do that, which make them very difficult for anybody. And that was, that's where the optimism comes. Let's face it, guys. They should have beaten the Thunder. They had that series won, game six at home. Right. Uh, they, they were in position to win that series. That's a great point. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the reality is they, they can make a run in the playoffs and they'll get there to the playoffs. Rod Tillery. Rob Fisher, Chris Harrington, as always, thank you so much. It'll be another great season for the Grizzlies. We'll take a short time out. Overtime is next. While the Grizzlies' regular season begins next Wednesday, the Mississippi River Kings will begin their regular season tomorrow night at the Lander Center in South Haven. Last season, the Kings skated to a 31-21-4 mark, advancing to the postseason where they would fall in three games to Huntsville. Head coach Derek Lammesser enters his 14th season with the organization and fourth as the head coach. Last week, I spent some time with Derek as we talked about the expectations for the 2014-15 campaign. Well, Derek, last year you guys reached the playoffs. You lose a tough three, best of three series against Huntsville. All three games happen to be played in Huntsville. When you look back on the season, how would you evaluate it? Um, I thought it was a very good season. Um, we, uh, we, we really grew as a team as the season went on. Um, I really liked the, the chemistry we had. Uh, you know, our goaltending was good. Our, our, our back end was, was really good. And uh, our forwards were, uh, were extremely well, uh, good as well. So. Um, overall, it was uh, it was a good regular season, just just disappointing uh, playoffs, and obviously something we got to get better at. Why were all three games in Huntsville? Um, for uh, for some reasons, uh, the Lander Center was booked. Uh, there was a circus booked here, so one of those quirks um, in the schedule. Exactly, and it was kind of uh, one of those things. There was nothing they can do. So uh, you know, unfortunately, we had to play them on the road, and uh, um, you know, but but it is what it is. One of the tough things about this level, as you know, is a lot of players are moving up or moving out, and you have to restructure the whole, pretty much the whole team. There are some returning players, but it's hard because each and every year it's different for you. It's a jigsaw puzzle. How tough was it over the summer putting together this team? Uh, you know, it is a little trickier. It's a little tougher. Um, we, you know, we'll probably have nine returning guys. Um, so, you know, you got to find those pieces throughout the summer. Um, it's tricky and, and it gets hectic towards the end of the end of the summer, but uh, it's part of the process. And um, you know, you put in that long, hard work in in the summertime, um, reap the benefits in the winter. You got the opener tomorrow. Obviously, uh, there's excitement in the air. People around this uh, this region certainly like hockey, but there's a lot of people that I think don't know a lot about the River Kings and need to know more about 
uh, what they're seeing when they come to a game. So how would you explain to those folks out there what you're going to see when you come watch the River Kings play? Oh, and when you, when you come out to a, to a hockey game and a River Kings game, you know, it's nonstop action. Uh, it's a very physical game. Um, it, there's always something going on where, where uh, you know, in other sports, there's a lot more downtime. In hockey, there's, you know, the physical play, the fast place, the, the physicality, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's action-packed. And you can't keep your, uh, you got to keep your eyes on the ice because there's always something going on. The Southern Professional Hockey League in which you play lost a couple of teams. They'll gain one back next year, but you're down to eight teams. Six will make the playoffs. Is that an adjustment going back from uh, last year when you would have eight teams make the playoffs? Yeah, it's a little bit of an adjustment uh, with the six teams making it. Uh, you know, every regular season game is important. Uh, so, you know, with two teams not making it in a small lead like that, there's, you know, we play some teams 10, 11 times. So those, uh, those battles are, are obviously very crucial and you got to place yourself um, in a good spot during the regular season to, uh, to compete in the playoffs. So you know each other pretty well by the end of the season, don't you? Oh, without a doubt. And there's, uh, there's not a whole lot of love for, for other, you know, the other teams. So uh, uh, it's, uh, it, it, like I said, it's, it's great rivalries with you know, having eight teams, uh, and I expect it to get even better this year. We talked about uh, lineup changes, roster changes year to year, but one thing that's been very stable is you, Derek Lammesser, back for his fourth year as head coach. 14th year with the organization, right? Yes, it's uh, it's 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 been a long uh, a long tenure, and uh, you know it, it's it's been awesome. I mean, I've, I was fortunate to play here for for 10 seasons as a player, and uh, and and you know, and, and obviously uh, luckier to uh, be in the position I am right now. So it, it's been it's been a, a wonderful ride, and um, like I said, uh, we we won championships here years ago, and it's uh, it's about time we get back to that same thing. Why do you enjoy it so much down here in South Haven, Mississippi? Uh, you know, it, we just we we came down here 14 years ago, and the the mid south they just opened their arms to me, and the, you know the southern hospitality, and you know how everyone just is, is so nice, and 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 you know makes you feel at home here. So um, I've raised my family here, and it's uh, it's home for us now. When we watch this team, and you just talked earlier about what fans can expect to see, but um, from last year to this year, style pretty much the same. Yes, it'll be very similar. Um, I think we'll add a little bit more skill. Um, last year we, we were a skilled team. Uh, obviously the physical physical play is very important. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure we have our physical players that are gonna you know, make sure that we stir things up out there and, and definitely uh, entertain our fans. How hard is it when you're battling these other teams in your league to get the services of a certain player, may have been released from a higher league, trying to, to take that step up, maybe coming right out of college, you're trying to grab them. Uh, the battle for, I don't want to call it recruiting because this is, not, this is not college, but you are recruiting players to come play professionally for you. How tough is that? Oh, it's, a, it's extremely competitive and, and it is... Most a, important part of your job? Uh, I would say it's a very important part of the job. Um, you know, you do a lot of hard work in the summer to build those teams and, and uh, you know, it's, it's very competitive with uh, not having affiliates, um, you know, where these other teams uh, have affiliates where they get players sent to them. So it's very competitive. You you, you definitely got to stay on top of things and uh, it, it's a big, big part of uh, the job. Several weeks back on, on Sports Files, we did a, a profile of concussions in the National Football League, in football in general, just concussions. And, and, and you know and you follow all sports and, and there's been a, um, a move to, be, to have that sport become safer. Hockey, we know, is another violent sport. The hits, uh, the the falls, you know, you fall on the ice and, and hurt yourself. What has hockey done as far as concussions are concerned to make it safer for the players? I think they've taken dramatic steps. Um, you know, even in our league alone, uh, you know, we now have a mandatory rule of, of uh, visors on players um, and mouth guards, which is it's a, it's a major step. Um, and obviously it's a serious thing. I know I, our organization does a fantastic job of taking care of our guys. If someone gets their bell rung, um, we, we go through all the proper measures to make sure that we don't bring them back too early and you know they're safe to, uh, to get back on the ice with us. All right, final question for you. No coach speak here. Realistic goal from this team this year in this league knowing what you're going up against? Realistically, um, you know, I'd be lying to you if I, if I didn't think this, but it's, it's bring a championship back here. Uh, it's, been, it's been a long time. Um, I think we've got the players, the chemistry, um, and you know I think it's just going to be a real big year for us. So barring any un, uh, unforeseen injuries or off the ice ordeals and players losing to other teams or other leagues, 
you feel if everybody stays intact, this could be a championship caliber team. Absolutely. I'd, I'd be lying to you if I said no. Derek, always a pleasure. Thank Best you of luck much. to you. Appreciate it. Thanks. And tomorrow night's opponent for the opener is Pensacola. The puck drops in South Haven at 7.05. On the gridiron, the Memphis Tigers return to action Saturday when they travel to Dallas to meet SMU. The Mustangs are the only winless team in the FBS. The Tigers are more than a three-touchdown favorite. And that'll do it for now. Remember, you can watch any of our previous shows by heading to our website, WKNO.org, and clicking on KNO Tonight. Until then, have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The Lighting Source, major line distributor of commercial and industrial lighting, including hard-to-find bulbs and fixtures, as well as a broad range of LED products. With 35 years' experience servicing lighting needs, The Lighting Source proudly sponsors Sports Files.